If we are thinking today of the two most important analog SLR systems most relevant in 2023, what would be your answer? I say it's Nikon and Pentax. So my name is Thomas and I already did review some nice Nikon analog cameras like the FM or the FM2. And today I've got this, the Pentax MX, Pentax all mechanical flagship in the 1970s with a then brand new K mount that is still in production today, the K mount. So let's have a go now. As we know, Pentax enjoyed huge success in the 1960s uh, with their Spotmatic lineup. And I already did a review of the Spotmatic and it still is one of my most favorite cameras of all time, 35mm cameras. But they had to up the game because uh, all the other ones were coming with a bayonet mount and in 1972 also Olympus uh, appeared with the M1 making cameras smaller, more beautiful, light white. So Pentax's answer to that was the MX in 1976 and it really seems that they just took an Olympus own one and thought we have to do everything that the Olympus does just a little bit better. So this one is a little bit smaller even than an OM1. This is more lightweight than an OM1 and it offers more features than the OM1, especially in the viewfinder interface. Uh, you get both uh, aperture and shutter speed inside the viewfinder. You got a fancy LED light meter that operates better than the OM1. They just wanted to do everything a little bit better. That was the goal of Pentax in 1976. So if you've got the MX in your hand, you notice that there are some things that look very similar to the Spotmatic, like the shutter speed dial, the shutter button, this whole arrangement is just like a takeover from the Spotmatic, but then it is not. The dial is a little bit smaller in terms of height, and it's kind of also harder to turn, actually. It's really, it has a nice feel to it, but in use, it's also a bit annoying because it's really hard to turn this thing. Uh, on the other hand, you notice how small everything is. So you've got this small thing here. This is your optical sort of way to show the aperture in the viewfinder. Here is, of course, the film rewind. On the bottom, we've got electric contacts for a winder, uh, which was an extra cost option. Uh, the battery goes here. Notice only the light meter needs a battery. This is a fully mechanical camera. All the shutter speeds, everything is controlled with clockworks and whatnot else. That's the way I like because without battery, it still will work. Uh, the shutter runs from one to one over one thousandth of a second plus B, of course. And the flash sync is sixtieth of a second. Uh, what else have we got here? This is for your studio flash. We've got a flash hot shoe, but no TTL or anything. And we've got, of course, the famous Pentax K mount that appeared in 1976, just one year before this camera came out. Oh, and the ASA thing is in here. For that, you press this tiny button. Oh, ASA, by the way, it runs from 25, it's the lowest and 1600 is the highest ISO you can set. And currently I'm running the Babylon 13 film, Lomography Babylon 13, so 25. I still have to overexpose every time by one stop because I can't set it to 12. Uh, Nikon FM, by the way, can go all the way down to ISO 12. So this is the original Pentax MX uh, half case. Uh, they always look like this today. You see, it doesn't look so nice. It, gets the job done, but the material, yeah, gets these wrinkles. 
you have to live with that. Of course, you've got a self timer, and if you do this, can you uh, see the aperture? So the self timer also includes the depth of field preview that you stop down like this. And cool thing, by the way, this is the Pentax M 50 mil f 1.4 goes from 1.4 all the way down to 22. Often the old 1.4 lenses only go to 16, but I wouldn't shoot it below f11 anyway, because otherwise you get a lot of diffraction. The one thing I love about this camera is the viewfinder interface. You've got all the information, aperture, shutter speed and uh, light meter, just like the Nikon FM. But this camera does it better because the shutter speed and the light meter are both to the right side in your viewfinder. And it's just done in a very, very intuitive way. So this is really the strong point about the Pentax MX. Okay, that's the struggle today is uh, ISO 13 and I want to take a picture of this street RT cologne, the cologne style of a beautiful flower. And uh, I think I can do that at 1.4. There we go. So when I shoot this camera, I still struggle to really love it because uh, I really hate the operation of this dial, you know. With one hand, it's just too hard. And then you have to do this to kind of adjust your shutter speed. And it's kind of fiddly. And in the Spotmatic, I don't know what they did differently. It's just so much easier to do. Um, Apart from that, yeah, it does what you want, this camera. I mean, I really like the viewfinder interface I told you already. And uh, the uh, selection of K-mount lenses is pretty big, uh, second only to Nikon maybe today. Uh, so 85 f2 is more expensive than for Nikon or 35 f2 more expensive. But still there is a huge, huge selection of nice lenses. And you've got K lenses that are the original ones. Some of them are real collector's items by now. And these are called M lenses uh, made for the MX. They're very small and very light white. And then they came with the A lenses that add automatic uh, aperture control for cameras with shutter priority or program auto mode. But you can use them all on the MX, so that's a good thing. And you can also use the autofocus lenses that are still in production as long as they have an aperture ring. So these are strong points. So in everyday life, the MX is very good, very easy to use. Uh, I still find it just a little bit fiddly.
So why did I say in the beginning that the K-mount is so relevant today? Well, the Nikon F-mount was launched in 1959 and they made cameras right up to today. But right like one year ago, Nikon announced that uh, they will concentrate on the new mirrorless Z-mount and the F-mount, the autofocus, whatever incarnations will come to an end, the SLR or DSLR lenses. Uh, Pentax, on the other hand, they are still making cameras for this very mount today in 2023 and yes Pentax today is very small business they don't have the success of Nikon Canon or Sony not the relevance but they are dedicated to making SLR cameras and keep this mount alive and that's the cool thing about Pentax so most of the modern lenses won't really work on a KX but um, it's still just super nice that the mount itself is still alive. And you can use all these old lenses on the modern cameras. And there are cameras to come. Maybe even analog cameras are, are going to be resurrected by Pentax. That's the cool thing. And that makes the Pentax mount so relevant today. Time for the verdict. Um, with analog cameras, it's always a matter of taste. Do you like the system? Uh, it's not like digital, all based on facts. That's why I like to shoot analog and I like to shoot these videos for you. Um, as I said, I'm a little bit struggling with the MX. I'm just not falling in love with it, but I think that's also a very personal matter. I'm still a huge Pentax Spotmatic fan, but those old M42 cameras yeah, they are getting really old and this is much more versatile in a way and also feels more modern. That's a good thing. I love all mechanical cameras and then in Pentax you have to go for the MX or the bigger KX. Also a really, really cool camera. I love the KX as well. And then there is of course the K1000, but that's a little bit overhyped in my opinion today. I mean, they stripped all the features from the K1000, even the self-timer. It's a cult camera, yes, but don't pay too much for it. If you go for Nikon, there would be the FM and the FM2. Uh, if you go for Olympus, there is the OM1. All these are beautiful cameras. Just pick the one that you like the most. That is my advice. Also keep in mind, MXs can be a bit temperamental. So shop around to get a good one that's working, doesn't have any dents or other problems. But that's also true for all the old cameras. Their Nikon has an advantage because their mechanical cameras were sold much later to 2001, whereas these were stopped in 1984. They are old, so beware when buying. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, maybe found it even useful. If you've got any questions or comments, write something in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments. I will happily answer every single one of them. And also please forget, don't forget, <laughs> to leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. It's a great support. I really appreciate that as well. So have a great time, live long and prosper, and I see you in the next video. Bye.